but they are a fast crew and we anticipate them finishing well up in the first ten and they are the, the crew that those starting up the front will be concerned about. The great problem with this sort of racing is that you can never let off because you don't know whether you've won until the times come out. And now the leaders past Chiswick 8, you can see that little island there in the background, the famous Chiswick 8, which is uh, approximately halfway, just about two miles. What a difference that uh, change round in the wind makes. Here comes the national squad in nice flat water. Tailwind down Chisigat, pushing them along. Looking towards that number one, Terry Dillon there, six foot five, nearly 15 stone. Uh, Cox Pat Sweeney has been abroad in America for 10 years. Tells me the last time he rode in this race was 1977, then he won it then. So they're coming in quite close to the Surrey Bank. Yes, I think they'll, they'll be looking for the, the shortest possible route. They'll take the slightly centre of the inside line. Here we have the uh, Crew 4, who are the second lightweight national team, but they're being closed up by, by Fiat, who are the second Italian crew here today. They're coxed by an English girl, Pauline Wright, who coxed the English 8 in the last Olympics. And this is, I think, on their, on their side, a very wise choice because the Italian coxes don't know the river. And we saw this morning in the boat race how terribly important it is to know where to go. And although there may be slight language difficulties, she'll certainly steer them well. And here they are trying to overtake a crew in what is a very difficult point in the race. And there you get a good aerial shot of the battle that's going on there between crews four and five, the, uh, the national squad number three crew and the Fiat Aviazioni crew from Italy. And the Italians are pulling level. And the leaders come to Hammersmith Bridge. It's centenary year, this famous old suspension bridge. Well, the first national squad crew seemed to, just after halfway, had taken about three seconds off their lightweight squad members. And they're now coming down towards the final straight under Hammersmith Bridge, and it's the way home. But uh, it's a very painful long way home. They've got to maintain this rhythm all the way down and increase the tempo as they come into the final mile. You can see those flags on top of the uh, Hammersmith Depository there. Nothing like this morning when they were standing out, almost flying up, certainly at right angles. And we can see that uh, the second crew, the National Squad lightweight crew, has opened up a big gap on those uh, Italians from Campania. It looks as if their attempt to gain the headship has uh, already failed so far this year. And for the first time today, the sun has come out in time to greet these oarsmen, these leaders, as they head for home at Putney. They'll soon be coming alongside the Fulham football ground, where the third division match is in progress against Port Vale. And the first squad crew is really not making very much impression on the, the lightweights behind them. There's a tremendous tussle going on here for first place. I would have said, if anything, the second crew has begun to close a little on that first crew. And this is Hampton School, who are the outstanding school crew in Great Britain today. They've produced a number of quite outstanding oarsmen, including Matthew Britton, who we saw rowing for Cambridge this morning. They recently won the school's head of the river, the prize for which was a trip to Hong Kong, where they take part in the Southeast Asia Championships. Trained by Steve Gunn, who's a coach to the Oxford ladies crew. These are very, very tough youngsters, trained extremely hard. A 
round as we look at uh, Hampton School. So the battle for the lead is being uh, fought out fiercely indeed as they come towards the boathouses of Putney. This is a, a difficult angle the, for the cameras, but we can see here how these first five crews are all still very much in contention. But that first crew is in some difficulty with the lightweights. And what a coup it would be if the lightweights can get right on top of the heavyweight crew. Very much fancied this uh, squad crew has destroyed all the opposition it's met in training. And as they come towards the Fulham football ground, I hear that Fulham are trailing to Port Vale by two goals to nil. Not happy days at Fulham. We've got uh, ideal conditions for lightweight rowing. The faster the conditions, the more it tends to favour the lightweights. If you get heavy conditions like the boat race crews rode in this morning, it certainly helps to have a heavyweight crew. But here, the lightweights being blown along, rowing beautifully. Their strokes, Stuart Forbes, sets a quite beautiful rhythm. It's always a beautiful crew to watch, any crew that he strokes. Striking a little bit higher, a few more strokes a minute they may take than the heavyweights. But they're not impeding the boat in any way. Here come Campania from Italy. All internationals in this crew, all of them have won medals at world class. So it shows the standard of the field at the front of this. And here's number five, which is Fiat, who've overtaken number four, the second lightweight crew. Again, a mix of uh, Italian internationals and club oarsmen. Coxed by Pauline Wright of Great Britain. Making up well. We look down, magnificent aerial view on the leading crew. Number one, the ARA national squad. Winners last year. They won by 20 seconds. So they're certainly not going to have that this year. They're not getting it their own way at all. I'd say the gap has stayed uh, barely moved. It's going to be a very close thing indeed, isn't it, between these there's leading not, two crews? There's really not much in this at the moment, Harry. It's extremely difficult to tell from this distance, but on the basis that they started with roughly two lengths of clear water between them. And here we have London University, who are making their charge from the back. Now, they're going to have some slower crews to overtake, and weaving in and out of the stream can impede you a little bit, particularly if the crews in front don't get out of the way as quick as they're meant to. The idea is that the, that the crews who are overtaking have right of way, and any crew in front of them should give way, but of course it doesn't always work that way. And now the two leading crews within sight of the finish. They finish at the, the University Stone, just above Putney Bridge, which is the starting point, of course, for the University Boat Race. And I'd say that these Squad first crew has pulled away a little bit in this last two minutes, but it's no substantial gap. Uh, they've raised their rate of striking to over 36 in an effort to get as far away from this second crew as possible. But it's a tremendous effort by the second squad crew who've chased them the whole way down the course. And this is a boatload of heavyweight internationals, well over 14 stone average weight, and coming up behind them, the lightweight group based at Nottingham, national squad again. Most of them only around 11 stone. And that second crew have uh, left the Italians some way behind them. So here we are now looking down on Putney Bridge. And just above that bridge is the finishing mark. And they're almost there. And a tremendous tussle there. The squad raised their rate up to 38. They're obviously anxious and they want to get out as far as they can. it's all over. The national squad first crew, last year's winners, are home again. And we have to wait now to see what their time is compared with the times of all the other crews that will be coming behind them. 420 in all. The winner, uh, effectually speaking, will come from what must be the top six or so. I think so. I, I think it's very unlikely that anyone will come from further behind. I, in fact, looking at the standard of the crews, I think the winner will be held in the first three or four. There's London University overtaking Tideway Scholar's second crew nearest you in the picture, red and gold blades. London University making rather hard work of it. 
They're a big crew and in this uh, tailwind they may not find it too easy. And inside them again, the Hampton School second eight. <laughs> Good tussle there. You see the sort of problems you face in this long distance race. The middle crew there is really the meat in the sandwich. 37? No. That's an astonishing picture. 39? <laughs> 38? Hampton School. Yeah. Building up towards the finish. We'll be looking for another good road to see them on their way to their trip to Hong Kong. And they've come up on 14 and overtaken them. Number 14 are London's first crew who pressed up on Hampton. You see how close these crews are getting. They all want to hold the middle line, which is where the strong tide is. So there's a tremendous tussle going along here. 13 trying to hold off 14. Hampton School, those schoolboys fighting off the older men from London Rowing Club. Including several Oxford and Cambridge Blues there in the London crew in the middle. Well, this is the first time the boat race and the head of the river have clashed on the same day since 1967. The head of the river, of course, is an amazing event. For some, it's deadly serious, but for a lot of other people, it's a jolly day out. Let's uh, hear from one of them. Your labours a moment. Your Putney Town? Putney Town Rowing Club, that's right. Well, yeah. Whereabouts do you start this afternoon? Uh, 165. And he's had a decent start? Um, it's not bad. We're hoping to improve a little bit and see how it goes. What are you feeling about the conditions? Much improved from earlier, haven't you? Yeah, now the tide's changed, it should be fine. Uh, once we've got the wind behind us, we'll be uh, having a lot easier row than the Cambridge and Oxford crews did, that's for sure. And what do you feel are your chances of improving on previously? Um, well, maybe we'll get about 150, I don't know. How we'll seriously see. do you take it all? Quite seriously, yeah. I mean, how serious has the training been? Uh, well, well, for Putney Town, quite serious. <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> well, it tells about two nights a week training, weekends uh, in the boat. And, uh, yeah, we've taken it reasonably seriously. A few head races before to get used to it. So, uh, and a few beers less than usual over the recent um, weekends? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Good luck anyway. Right, thanks very much. Maybe. The man from Putney Town talking there to Gerald Sinstadt. And crew after crew now is finishing over this famous reverse course, Mortlake to Putney. We should be getting some times pretty soon from uh, the leading crews home. We're waiting for those. Meanwhile, this procession, I keep repeating it, but it is astonishing that you can launch 420 racing eights onto the River Thames <laughs> at the end of March and produce a spectacle like this. The marshalling of these, these boats, getting them uh, afloat and getting them to the start so that they all start in the order in which uh, they're listed it is an astonishing feat of organization. And look at this for a, a little race going on here between these three. So we've got uh, Hampton School just, just holding on to the, the older men behind in the London and the Bedford crew. London in the middle there, Bedford on the far side. And they had a real race down the last mile of it. Quite big crowds along the hard here at Putney. People coming out in the afternoon sunshine and enjoying this amazing spectacle. All the way up and down this river have been dramas. Everyone is having their private battles, overtaking, being overtaken, trying to stop being overtaken. Meanwhile, there we have crews on the way to the start. 195, still a long way to go. Yep. Liverpool Victoria, number 195. And here we have uh, crew 71, rent-a-crew. 
by name, not entirely by nature, though it's a, a band of friends who get together for these sort of events. It includes uh, Tom Boswell, Radio 2's rowing correspondent, rowing down the uh, far end of the boat at the seven seat. Two from the Cox. Taking it rather more leisurely than you find with the, the top crews. There we have uh, London University making their challenge. Coming down to Barn Elms, they've got about two and a half minutes to row. Of course, they don't know what's gone before them, so they've got to do everything they can to produce the fastest possible time. Coming past Fulham Football Ground. They've probably overtaken one or two crews. Still no times in from the leading crews. London's day out on the river. This is the uh, largest uh, eights race in this country. It's almost the largest in the world. There are there's one race in America where they race throughout the day on a non-tidal river, which is bigger. Uh, there's plenty of demand for this race. It could, there could be very many more entries if uh, the river actually permitted it. 420 is the maximum number which the river authorities will permit for safety reasons. There are various races held over this, over this reach, but this is by far the largest. And it's a tremendous feat of organization and management to actually get everyone in the right place and the right time. So uh, apart from the number of people, each one of these boats is worth at least £7,000. So there's an awful lot of hardware which has to be looked after down there. There are prizes, of course, for a lot of people, aren't there? All sorts of grades and prizes in various grades. Yes, there are, there's help. Prizes given for, for everyone, not least the overall winner, but to the best crew who rose on the tidal reaches of the Thames, the best crew from off the Thames. You know, there are all the help. Now then, Gerald Sinstad is talking with Mike Sweeney. Pat Sweeney, can I have a quick word with you? What's your verdict at the end of that? Do you think you've done enough? Uh, from the sounds of it, I can't really see anything that's going on behind the lead. Let me know what's going on, and uh, it sounds like I think we did, yeah. The lightweights from Nottingham gave you a bit of a race, though, didn't they? Yeah, they went really well. Um, it, it, we didn't have a particularly great race. Uh, it, it was quite good, but it, it was very, very rough all the way down, so we really couldn't just use the strength that's in the boat. It was always running away, the water swirling underneath us, and it wasn't a very good plane just to work on, so it was a little bit... not, not quite right, but it was, it, was, it was pretty good, but it could have been a bit better than we had. From the water side, it looked a lot better than it did earlier for the university crew. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. It, it was swirling underneath, it wasn't the breakers, but there was a lot of movement underneath the water, and there wasn't an even plane to sit there and actually work at. So. You make a bit of a habit of winning this, don't you? Yeah, not for ten years, it's the first time I've done it in ten years. So. And one last time? Yeah, yeah, ten years ago. You booked your seat for 97? Yeah, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. Well done, let's come along and talk to uh, Steve Redgrave and Andy Holmes here, if we can get that far. Steve, back in the eight again, have you enjoyed that? That was uh, quite enjoyable. It's, uh, we didn't hit a very good rhythm, it was a bit rushy and uh, wasn't the ideal way to, for a, a big heavyweight crew to row. But uh, I think we got there first and that's what counts. And getting you in good trim for the summer? Uh, we, we're getting there. It's a long process at the moment, but uh, we're getting there. And just a quick word with Andy behind you. Andy, have you enjoyed the race today? Uh, yeah, it's alright. It's a long way though. A long way, 17 minutes. <laughs> Takes it out of you. You'd be glad to get back to 2,000 metres? Yeah, be a bit of a rest after this. Well done, thanks very much all of you. Well, those are the stars of this event, but uh, Gerald Sinsat's also been talking to one of the chaps who uh, is not quite such a star. You are Morton Lake Anglia and what? An Alpha Rain Club. We're a combination of three clubs that amalgamated in the last 20, 30 years. Do you compete in this event regularly? Yes, we've been here since the very beginning, of, since the first head start in 1920. We're, uh, we've always boated from here wow. as Mortlake. What does it offer?